Good morning. Today, I will be sharing my experience the very first time I ever auditioned for a DCI drum corps. Okay, so Okay, so we're gonna flash all the way back to 2007, 13 years ago. Man, that was a long time ago. I was a senior in high school, 17 years old, and I decided that it was finally time to watch some DCI. So at this point in my life, you know, I knew, I knew that band was what I wanted to do. I loved band. So I decided that I was gonna go audition for the Cadets Drum and Bugle Corps. I sung the rhythm, favorite drum corps, the drum something, and yeah. And conveniently for me, the Cadets are based out of New Jersey, which is where I had to go audition. And I had to beg my parents to pay the audition fee, because it was like, I think 200 bucks or something, and yeah, I didn't have a job. Luckily, state band, fourth chair, you know, I was pretty good. You know, how should I audition? To be honest, that's what they look for. Like, at you find eager people is, have you marched anywhere else yet? Because you're probably not going to make the drum line if you don't have any marching experience outside of your high school. To be honest, that's what they look for. Like, at that high level, especially like the top, like, 12 cores, they're going to want you to have marched in either, like, an open class or a DCA core or a WGI group or something. They want to know that you can handle summer of tour. So there's one thing being able to play the parts, but it's another thing being able to handle being away from your family for three months, you know, getting your butt kicked all summer in the heat. The only way they know you can handle that is if you marched another drum corps. So all of you super motivated kids out there, definitely go to the drum corps camp if you can afford to do that, but don't expect to get in if you never marched anywhere. I would recommend first going to your local open class or DCA core, march there for a year, and then try your hand at one of the world class cores. But I didn't know any of that crap at the time. I thought I was going to, you know, go there, play the Cadets 2005 feature and get a spot. But all that aside, I still have some other issues going into this drum corps camp. Number one, I didn't get the exercise book until like two days before the camp started. I talked about this in my top five most horrific audition experiences. I registered for this camp like two weeks in advance, and they never sent me the audition packet. I went back and forth contacting them, like, where the heck is this music? I gotta learn all this crap. So I learned all these exercises in like a day, and I got them to the point where I could play them kind of while reading, and I could sort of get through them. And the other part of the audition was to do an individual solo, and I had an epic solo prepared. I was getting ready to do this IME contest for our local indoor circuit, and I wrote like the hardest crap I could possibly play, and I was gonna wow them with all these beats. No! And issue number two was that I was really worried I was gonna get lost on the drive to this place. So the school the audition was being held at was about 45 minutes from where I lived, and I hadn't been driving for very long. Like I just got like my full license recently, and it was gonna be by far the furthest I've ever driven. Remember, this was 2006, right? Because I was getting ready for the 2007 season, and this was before GPS on smartphones were a thing, and I don't think our family had a GPS, so I had to print out directions on MapQuest and just read the papers I was driving. And I had like the worst freaking sense of direction ever. Like I would get lost in my high school hallway, like going from one class to the other. Like I didn't know how I was gonna drive all the way to this town that I'd never been to. But luckily for me, my dad is super nice and awesome, and a couple days before the camp, we did a dry run drive from our house to the school so that I could memorize how to get there. Okay, so the day comes for this audition. I'm kind of sort of prepared a little bit. I get my truck, I drive all the way there. I somehow didn't get lost. I made it there. And I was like ridiculously early because I was convinced that I was gonna get lost on the way there. And I got there like three hours before they even like started doing registration. So I just go into the school, there's like nobody there yet. I just like start screwing around and like trying to learn the exercises on the pad. And I'm just kind of waiting, and then finally people start trickling in. Also, this was not the first camp of the year, the audition experience camp. I missed that because I had like all South Jersey on band auditions or something. So this was actually the first callback camp. Like all the vets and the people that got called back from the audition camp, all these people were there. So kind of skipped the first round, but sorry, let's just jump into it, right? So then I find out you know where the tenor line is, and I meet with those guys and we start going to the truck to get the drums off. I talked about this in my top ten most awkward band experiences. I never used Yamaha drums at the time with the like scoop harness. I meet with those guys and we start going to the truck to get the drums off. I talked about this in my top 10 most awesome first round, but sorry, let's just jump into it, right? So then I find out, you know, where the tender line is and I meet with those guys and we start going to the truck to get the drums off. I talked about I talked about this in my top 10 most awkward band experiences. I I never used Yamaha drums at the time with the like scoop harness in the audition packet. I went back and forth contacting them like where the heck is this music? I gotta learn all this crap. So I learned all these exercises in like a day and I got them to the point where I could play them kind of while reading and I could sort of get through them. And the other part of the audition was to do an individual solo and I had an epic solo prepared. I was getting ready to do this IME contest for our local indoor circuit and I wrote like the hardest crap I could possibly play and I was gonna wow them with all these beats. No! And issue number two was that I was really worried I was gonna get lost on the possibly play F start. That's 2005 feature and get a spot. But all that aside, experiences, I registered for going into this drum corps camp. Number one, I didn't get the exercise book until like two days before the camp started. And I talked about this in my I talked about this in my top five most horrific audition experiences. I, I registered for this camp like two weeks in advance, and they never sent me the audition packet. And I went back and forth contacting them, like, where the heck is this music? I gotta learn all this crap. So I learned all these exercises in like, like scoop harness. So I tried to set the drums up on the stand, and the freaking thing like rolled off and flipped all the way down the stairs. And I looked like a total d like before we even started doing anything. Okay, so this rehearsal starts, there's about like 10 quad players there, something like that. And remember, these are all either vets or people that got called back, and then me, this random high school kid that showed up. So the instructors that were there, we had the quad tech stand, and there was also the caption heads, which were Colin McNutt and Tom Unks. So we're playing, we're drumming through like eight on a hand legatos. I can get through that one while reading it. And I remember like not even like 10 minutes into playing, I got called out like right away by Colin. He told me I wasn't hitting the drums hard enough, like at all. And I guess the technique we used like at my high school, we like kind of played with a lighter touch, and here in drum corps, you gotta play some sack, you know what I'm saying? So this was like super weird to me. I felt like I was like, beating another tip I give people. Like, whatever comment you get from the instructors at these audition camps, like, do your absolute best to adjust to the technique because that's what they want to see in order for you to make a line. They want to see that you can play like the way the other vets do and the way that they want you to play. So we go through most of the exercise packet. I'm doing okay. I didn't really break that much from what I remember, even though I was really unprepared for this music. Then they said we're gonna work on the cadence. I never got the cadence. This was not in the warm up packet that they sent me. And I was the only person in the room that didn't have this music. Like, everybody else probably got it at like the audition experience camp and I've been preparing it for that whole month. 
And then there's me, a random high school kid, so I have to sight read this crap. But I was doing pretty good, like better than I ever had, and I was really proud of myself. And the tenor tech, you know, he took notice of that, and he gave me compliments that I was doing a pretty good job of just getting the thing like a couple minutes ago. Okay, so rehearsal ended for that night. This was Friday night. The whole camp is three days long. You got the Friday night, all day Saturday, and then Sunday in the morning. So everyone went into the gym to, you know, get in their air mattresses and sleeping bags and go to sleep. But here's problem number three. I didn't know how I was supposed to take a shower. Like I'd never showered in a group setting before, and I knew like going into this that that was what happened. But I was like really nervous to get naked in front of everyone. I didn't know if there was like proper etiquette or like if I should wear a bathing suit. I think I actually packed a bathing suit like a total noob. And I remember I like went into the bathroom to brush my teeth, and I was gonna like scope out the area to see what was going on. But I was just like so tunnel vision. I just like walked to the sink with my head down, brushed my teeth, and then left and didn't shower. Like a nasty, disgusting thing. Day two. Okay, so we wake up in the morning on day two, and we go and eat breakfast, and keep in mind, I didn't know anybody at this camp. I went all by myself. Like, I asked some of the kids in my high school drumline to come, but, like, none of them, like, really wanted to or didn't think they were good enough to do it, so I'm all alone here, people. And I remember at every single meal, I just kind of sat with the tender vets. It was uh, this guy, Brian, and this other guy, Nibbles. And, you know, they were, like, super nice dudes. Like, they didn't mind having this random high school kid just tagging around with them. But the first thing we did that morning was a little visual audition. Now, all of you who follow DC, I know that the cadets, they march off of the right foot. When they step off, their right foot goes first. 99 ish percent of groups do left foot lead. Like, this was, like, the opposite of what I was used to. But I knew that going in there, and I kind of worked on it a little bit before this, so I didn't do too bad with that. And then for the rest of the day, we did uh, some subsectionals, and then we had battery ensemble, and I got called out a lot because my technique was jacked up because I was trying to play louder. And that night we did the individual auditions. So I went in there, you know, you get the adrenaline going in these individual auditions. Like I had freaking Tom Hanks and Colin McNutt, like two of like, the biggest names in DCI, and I was, you know, a little bit freaking out. But before I even played anything, you know, we talked a little bit. You know, I told them like the high school I went to, that I was fourth chair all state band. <laughs> I'm kind of a big deal. They also asked me how comfortable I was with the exercise packet, and I was honest with them. I told them that I wasn't comfortable because I just got it like two days ago. So they just told me that I could play some exercises that I was comfortable with, which was the exercises we were doing in my high school marching band. So I played those instead. And this whole individual audition, I was getting called out for you know sound quality and technique and everything. But it's okay, right? Like I said, I had an amazing solo prepared. Like I was gonna knock their socks off with this. So I played this freaking choppy, crazy solo that I wrote. And I remember I had like a really good rep on it. I hit like maybe just like one rim total. Like I did really, really good on this. By the way, if we hit 3,000 likes on this video, I will do a good rep on it. I hit like maybe just like one rim total. Like I did really, really good on this. But by the way, by the way, if we hit 3,000 likes on this video, I will do a reaction video to that solo. My first ever tenor INE solo in high school. Yeah! So after I shot So after I got done this solo, like, I look up, and, like, I see Colin and Tom just, like, kind of, like, confused. It turns out they were, like, really surprised that I had those kinds of chops, but I played with, like, really bad sound quality. Again, they called me out, and they said, like, yeah, like, you should really learn sound quality before you learn all those choppy things. Like, it's very interesting. And I remember Colin actually got up and went behind the drums and, like, demonstrated, like, okay, you did, like, some kind of sweet pattern like this, and this is how you played it, this is how you should play it, and you played with, like, real beefy, loud sound quality. So I got a lot of good information in this audition, but then came the part where they write down a little number on their sheet. If you get a one, that means you're called back. If you get a two, then you're maybe called back. If you get a three, then I'll see you later. Not to anyone's surprise, they wrote down the number three, and I got cut. But I wasn't surprised, I was kind of expecting that to happen. I had like good chops, but like my sound quality and technique was jacked. I had a lot of stuff to work on for the next time I audition. And if you didn't notice behind me, the goal went up. 4,000 likes, I will talk about first time I audition technique was jacked. I had a lot of stuff to work on for the next time I audition. And if you didn't notice behind me, I wasn't surprised, I was kind of expecting that to happen. I had like good chops, but like my sound quality and technique was jacked. I had a lot of stuff to work on for the next time I audition. And if you, and if you didn't notice behind me, the goal went up. 4,000 likes, I will talk about first time I auditioned for a DCA core and how that went. It was interesting. So now it's time to go. So now it's time to go to sleep again, Saturday night. So it was my second time trying to figure out how to take a shower. And I did literally the exact same thing I did the night before. I just walked in tunnel vision, head down, brushed my teeth, and then left. Didn't shower again like a disgusting creature. Oh man, so na like three days in a row without showering. That is gross. My advice is just get naked. Just get naked. Right now, get naked. Creature. Oh man, so na like three days in a row without showering. That is gross. My advice is just get naked. Just get naked. Right now. Get naked. Okay, so Sunday morning comes around, we just drummed an ensemble the whole time, it was fine, it was cool, it was interesting, I already knew I was cut, I just tried to do my best to adjust my technique with all the comments I was getting, and I thought I did a decent job. And then came the other part, the last part that I was really worried about was driving home. I was worried I was gonna get lost again, but somehow I didn't. I made it home off of the freaking MapQuest directions. I was like so proud of myself for that. So proud of myself for that. I did some really good adulting that week. Like, this was the most adult experience I had ever had up to that point. Like I was all on my own for a whole weekend. Like a whole weekend, people. <laughs> the most adult experience I had ever had up to that point. Like I was all on my own for a whole weekend. Like a whole weekend, people. That's my story. That's my story of my first ever DCI audition experience. It went kind of bad, but at least I got a lot of good information and improved, and then ended up marching three years of DCI after that. I hope this video was informative and maybe helpful to some of you younger people looking to audition for DCI, and some of you older people that have DCI experience, please compose some three years of DCI after that. I hope this video was informative and maybe helpful to some of you younger people looking to audition for DCI, and some of you
audio was informative and maybe helpful to some of you younger people looking to audition for DCI. And some of you older people that have DCI experience, please compose some comments and let me know how your auditions went. And also, and also make sure you click that subscribe. Younger people looking to audition for DCI. And also make sure younger people looking to audition for DCI. And also make sure you click that subscribe button. And some of you and some and some of you older people and some of you older people and some and some. Younger people looking to audition for DCI, and also make sure you click that. And also make sure you click that subscribe button because the goal of 69,420 subscribers is coming upon us. We just passed 60,000, only 9,420 more to go. And also don't forget to ring that Liberty Bell and click that like button. And also, and also consider buying a custom t-shirt such as this one. I will leave the link in the description. And have a good morning.